Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about artifacts and what we know about them. If you have um, other information about artifacts um, that you wish to share and perhaps I didn't cover, please leave it in the comments. Like and subscribe and let's get to it. So the first thing we need to know about artifacts is that they are divided into rarities between the three star artifacts all the way up to or the common all the way up to the rarest which are the five star artifacts and they are um all come with a main stat which is at the top and sub stats which are the four at the bottom some sets of artifacts have um a two piece bonus and a four piece bonus to them and each of those uh, individual sets um, will have um, different types of bonuses that interact with the character's elemental reactions or simply uh, battle style. For example, if you hit somebody with an arrow within 0.1 seconds, then the attack attri attribute is increased. Or if you uh, create an elemental reaction of some sort, whether it be overload or supercharge or superconduct, um, then something else happens. Increase the damage, maybe increase resilience, or it could be also whether you shield yourself, your shields are gonna be even stronger based on this set. So each uh, set has something uh, else to contribute. So like I said before, uh, three stars to five stars um, from common quality to uncommon or rare pieces um, to the five star legendary uh, artifacts. Now, the rarity in this game is not, um, as far as artifacts go, it's not that uh, concerning or drastic because I mean, the orange items or artifacts are easy to get once you get into the higher levels of the game. Uh, so if you forget to farm or do anything where you're collecting artifacts exclusively, don't fret too much. Your account is definitely not ruined. Uh, you can basically skip all of this like tar special targeted artifact selection. Uh, you can just do the story for now and then later on target specific domains which you want to get the specific artifacts uh, for your team or for a certain character because you wish to play him a certain way. Some of these artifacts do enable certain characters to perform better during battle, but they are not exclusive to, to those characters and you can mix match and try out different stuff. Of course, I myself am not a min-maxer, uh, so I don't care too much about what artifacts the characters have, but I do like to have something um, that definitely supports the character in my in my game through because it's gonna make the game a little bit easier um, and it's also gonna make the game a little more enjoyable for that character so today we have lisa here to help us out in selecting artifacts for her i have not put um, anything in her because basically i don't use her very much uh, so for me it's not um a uh, priority for her to have any artifacts at all. I wish at some point where I have um, more constellations for her uh, that I get to play her because uh, she does seem like a very interesting character as far as being an electro catalyst. And uh, coming up in 2.6, we'll have Yae Miko as a five star electro catalyst. Um, but for now, I don't have the constellations and I feel like I'm missing out on other characters, um, better damage uh, potential just because I don't have those con these constellations yet. And she's probably one of the hardest to get constellations on out of the just the banners. And she has been in the Paimon shop uh, from, from time to time. But of course, I being a free-to-play player, I, I kind of save those, those uh, resources for more wishes rather than uh, characters but as far as artifacts are concerned uh, they are uh, all of them can set up to five between the uh, 
different items. We have the Flower of Life, which is a, a item that is always going to have the main stat of HP, flat HP. Um, there's no flower out there that has anything other than HP for main stat. So this is a set artifact that you always going to have um, HP as the main stat. Uh, then of course you're gonna have your substats um, and you're never gonna have a substat shared with the main stat of the item so you will never have a flower that has HP percentage um, boost in its substats they're always gonna be different the second item uh, we get is the plume of death uh, this commonly referred to as the feather uh, this is always going to be uh, for main stat an attack, uh, a flat attack damage. And uh, because of that, you will never see a feather with a attack, a flat attack on its substats. You might see feathers that have attack percentage like this one, but uh, you will never see a flower, a uh, feather with attack, uh, flat attack. Next item is the uh, Sands of Eon. Uh, these, these are sort of like uh, a timepiece uh, from, from most of the time, but sometimes they look like flask to me um, or containers of sorts. Um, but for the most part, they look like uh, time uh, sand clocks. But this one looks more to me like uh, some sort of pocket watch. Uh, these items uh, don't have a specific uh, main set, but they do have uh, things that they prefer. So um, we'll have items in this category with the main stat of Elemental Mastery, HP Percentage, Energy Recharge Percentage, Attack Percentage. Um, what else we can find here? Uh, flat defense percentage um, from what I've seen here there is no uh, timepiece that's gonna have uh, crit damage or uh, crit rate percentage increase so those are mainly it uh, that you're gonna find uh, for the sense of Eon the next item is the goblet of I'm gonna say anything for the name of pronunciation of, of this uh, they are all types of goblets or or flask of some sort um, now these items are kind of special because apart from having the attack percentage and maybe a defense percentage uh, and elemental mastery uh, main stat these are the goblets are the only items that I've seen have increased to cryo damage bonuses, specific elemental bonuses percentage to them. Uh, whether it's cryo, hydro, electro, and so forth. The only one we haven't seen is, of course, being the dendro damage bonus percentage because it hasn't been introduced in the game yet. But at some point when it when it is, I imagine there will be a, d a dendro damage bonus percentage uh, to this item. Other than that, uh, they also have defense percentage, attack percentage, HP percentage. Uh, we just saw an elemental mastery. Um, apart, uh, this is a, a special one, is physical damage bonus percentage. Um, there is rarely any other item that has this uh, kind of stat. And of course, being that they have these main stats, you'll never see a item that has uh, this uh, as a substat, if it does. Now, physical damage bonus percentage, geo damage bonus percentage, and all the other elementals, I have never seen uh, items that have it in their substats. So other than getting it here, I haven't seen any other artifacts that have it in, in their substats at all. So it's not a possibility to get it um, in another manner because of that reason. Of course, the goblets that have it in the main stat won't never have it, but um, it's the case that 
uh, they don't. There's no other item, even if you have another main stand in that they will have it on the sub stat. Apart from that, the only other place you would see a pyro damage boost or a elemental, some sort of elemental boost to the character will be actually in the said bonus itself. So for example, the Witch Hearts Flames, um, this one in particular, none of these, well this one has for example pyro damage bonus percentage. Um, and the only other place you see in the set, uh, if you have two piece set, uh, it'll have the pyro damage bonus 15% uh, uh, plus uh, there in the in the set itself, but it will never be in the sub stat. Now, some people, I've been going for this item for a long time, and I do like that it has the pyro damage bonus because I really want to uh, want it for D Luke. But unfortunately, the sub stats in this item for me are not okay. It's like you have double HP, HP flat, HP percentage. Uh, plus defense percentage, which is not so good. And d look doesn't need energy recharge that much. His, his ult and his and skills abilities are almost always up. So he doesn't need um, very much energy recharge. Now, another thing to note now that we have double HP here is that an item substance will never be the same. So you won't have double HP flat, but you can have uh, double HP here like a flat number and a percentage number boost so that's another thing to know about artifacts and the last item is the circlet of logos um, these are mainly helmets or circlets uh, but um, the noblest set has a mask instead for some reason uh, that uh, people use I think it's because this mask is not meant to be worn as a face mask it's mostly as a decoration for like a tilted headpiece of some sort and that's why it's in here like this uh, these items the circlets have a special uh, stat that you rarely see that you don't I don't think you don't see them in other uh, item sets or item uh, spots and that's the crit rate and crit damage percentage boost um, in the main stat of course it being in the main stat will not um, make it available in the substat um, but it's um, usually the main stats carry a higher weight than the substats do so a great way to get crit rate or crit damage uh, bonuses for your characters is to have the appropriate circlet um, of logos um, equipped on them because other items uh, won't have them of course you can always get for example crit damage percentage plus on the substat if if the main stat is something else on the on the circlet now one thing that is important um, because of the circlet most people choose to have crit damage or crit rate on their circlet is because it's very difficult to create a formula that is beneficial to the character as far as the stats are concerned now most people uh, agree that the best formula for crit rate crit damage is to keep a one to two ratio on it i am unsure as to why anybody would want more than 100 percent crit rate i don't know if there are certain uh debuffs or certain uh stats that would make that uh a um a hindrance um, but I always have a very difficult time getting that one or two percentages mainly because I don't focus too much on this min maxing that's going on but if you have a hundred crit rate um, I don't know if it's even possible but if you have a hundred crit rate then you probably want your crit damage to be in the 200 percent if you have a crit rate of 50 percent then you want your crit damage to be a hundred percent so keeping that one to two ratio seems to be um, will give you the most damage output or the mess um, the most damage um, out of it if you're if you're looking into that again for myself personally i don't um have that in my characters so most of my characters have like let's take somebody from over here let's take somebody like d luke 
His crit rate is 10% and his crit damage is 103. And this is definitely not ideal. Um, but it's as close as I can come based on the items I kind of want for him. Um, I the, the reason the crit damage is so high or at 100 is because I have a uh, circlet with crit damage bonus on him. And that uh, gives him that... Uh, 103 percent uh, crit damage on him i i like again i find it very difficult to keep this in a one to two ratio but it is possible from what other people uh, from what i've seen um, other players showcasing but i don't focus too much i'm not worried too much about it i just make it work as best i can and then i just move on mm. You can see here, this creep damage gives him 62%. And that's it for the uh, five different types of sets, their main stats and their substats. Remember um, that you will never have a substat that is similar to the main stat, so you have to keep that into consideration. Um, also, you have to remember that certain items come with special, special types of main stats, meaning the flower only HP, the feather only has attack. Uh, the goblets will have the elemental damage bonuses, and the circlets will have the crit rate damage and crit uh, crit damage bonuses as well. Now, and the goblets, of course, will just be generic. Now, if you're wanting to uh, enhance your characters with the specific bonus sets then you will need at least two pieces or four pieces uh, to activate their respective bonuses. In this case, my Diluc has the four piece set of the Crimson Witch Flames set. So he gets to activate the two, two types of bonuses. You can only, based on the, since we only get five items, you can only have one, one or two bonus sets. Uh, so basically you get two Two, the two-piece set for one set and two-piece set bonus for another set. But you can not, never have a four-piece set uh, from both sets because obviously you would need eight items for that and we can only equip five. So you can mix and match the two-piece set bonuses for different sets or you can just go with one. Or it's also a possibility you don't want to either bother with the sets and just equip random items and get no nothing of the bonus but that's not typically an ideal situation and you will probably want at least a two-piece set uh, two-piece set bonus on on your characters when playing um, apart from that uh, I do want to say that based on the rarity of the items they will come with uh, the main stat pretty uh, set so if they're level one or level zero item they will always have this basic HP and that main stat number will always be the same no matter what. So if you can see here, I have a bunch of Noblesse flowers uh, from the Noblesse Oblige set um, and they all start at 717 HP. So that's going to be the case regardless of what flower it is. But as you can see, that main stat doesn't change. The substats will have different values. And I'm not too sure if the beginning of each substat um, signifies the rarity or quality of the item. But of course, uh, not all the items that start at zero. Let's say, for example, let's look at defense. This noblesse flower has 16. This one also has 16. But look at this third one. It starts at 23. So depending on the on the item substat, it will begin in one of four places based on the quality of that stat. Whether that means it's good or bad, not sure. But every time you level up a care uh, an artifact uh, up by four, up to 20, you will get a boost. A random boost to that artifacts substat as well as a boost to the main stat so it could turn out that you have 
the highest quality uh, defense stat possible for this item. Uh, let's see if there's another defense uh, flat stat in one of my flowers here. This one's at 21. So we have 16, 23, and 21 so far. 21 again, 19. So, okay, so it looks like we, we, we got our base. So 16, 19, 21, and 23. Those are the beginning um, substat numbers for flat defense on this item, on the flowers. I believe they are the same regardless of what flowers uh, set it is. So if you take the uh, Heart of Death set, they will have the same, uh, it will be one of those four. See, for example, this is the Witch Flowers Blaze uh, and the defense is at 19. So the highest, uh, obviously the highest flat defense that we can get um, this items will be 23 and this is across all items so flowers feathers goblets timepieces and circlets all of them will be either if they have uh, the substat defense from night uh, for, it will be either defense 19 16 19 21 23 regardless of wherever they are uh, the substats will go by that now Based on your rolls, once you level up the items to 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20, a random one of those subsets will be selected and boosted based on some uh, formula or, cal or calculation that they do in the background. So it could be that you start with this. Let's say I wanted a defense character, and I, uh, I know that this is the top defense flat stat substat and I was really gunning for that but I level the item for 20 and it just so happens the flower never actually boosted that substat it stayed at 23 that's obviously not a good thing and that's the randomness piece that comes into the artifacts um, or farming for the artifacts um, to combat that um, you can of course keep mining for different items and or different artifacts and level several of them until you get one with substats that you actually like or are comfortable with playing um, to kind of uh, better your situation. As a general rule of thumb for me personally, I don't like if I'm not focusing on defense then I would like items that aren't with the set or not with the set if I can manage it that don't have defense as their substat. So they have other uh, other stats like attack. Attack is very important. So this item, for example, has a double attack substats, an energy recharge, and a defense. Not so bad. It's not a bad item. Depending on how it levels from 0 to 20, that attacks or energy recharge might get boosted but it's also the possibility highly unlikely that all the boosts go to defense uh, more than likely one will probably go to defense two if i'm slightly less lucky three is i'm extremely unlucky but um it will take one of those substats and boost it up so depending on how it ends at level 20 um I will have an item that I like or I don't like. And as you can see, I have not leveled a single one of those flowers that has defense on them um, because of reasons. I just don't have um, the necessity uh, for that to, to be the case for now. I don't have any characters that, that need it, so I definitely uh, don't want it there. The, the reason being, for this particular play, case, when we look at the sets, the Noblesse, for example, um, gives an elemental burst damage boost for its bonus, for the two-piece bonus. And then for the four-piece bonus, is using an elemental burst increases all party members' attack by 20% uh, 
for 12 seconds and the effect cannot stack. So this gives a boost to attacks. So this is a set that you will probably want in a sub DPS or a support character. Someone that you will be switching out of to your main DPS person so that they gain that 20% attack boost for 12 seconds. Um, also, you may want to put it in a uh, character that has a decent elemental burst damage uh, bonus. So a perfect example of this would be uh, Jinshu. Jinshu has those piercing blades uh, for his burst, uh, which deal tremendous damage and deal and apply hydro to the mobs it hits. So his elemental burst damage will get a 20% 20 20 boost. And on top of that, who, whatever character I switch to, including himself, or he, he has to buy, uh, with him, will get a 20% attack boost as well. So this is a perfect set for him to have a say sub DPS or a support character that you may have in your team. Now, uh, if they are, there's one thing that I learned late in the game uh, that I wish I knew when I started and was that uh, artifacts in the beginning of the game are not that important. So you don't have to level these lower artifacts, these blue three-star artifacts that you get uh, with the game or these common artifacts that are grayed out. There are these one stars. Um, because it's not, it's really not needed. And even though this uh, traveling doctor set increases incoming healing by 20% and using my elemental burst restores 20%, it's good for the beginning. When you're learning the game, it's a little more lenient. Um, it's not needed to level any of these up um, to 20. Uh, or actually, you can't level up one star uh, pieces to 20. I think there is a cap at 12, I believe. Three stars is, I think, or maybe it's eight for common. And it's, it's it three level, four levels higher for the three stars, four level higher for the, for the purples. And then, of course, up to 20 for the, for the five stars. Uh, orange ones so these up to 20 these up to the purples up to 16 the blues are probably up to 12 and then the commons are probably i don't know if there's a two star artifact i don't think there are two star characters if there are i don't have any because i probably used them all let's see here maybe the, i don't yeah i think it's common one star there must be two stars. I mean, why put up to five stars if... The problem is I don't have any at the moment. If there are two stars. Yeah, I don't have any, unfortunately. Oh, there is one of them right there. So, so there are two stars. Um, it's been so long since I use these artifacts. Since I don't put them, since I have access to the five stars, there's no point for me to uh, keep any of these stuff. I usually they end up being used for enhancement purposes. And since we're talking about enhancement, basically they give you a um, you use you destroy artifacts to enhance the ones that you like the most in level. So that's a kind of mechanic um, that's. Uh, it's a bit, it, it's how you level up the artifacts. It's how it is, how the game was built. Uh, so if if you didn't like gun for or, or went after artifacts in the beginning of the game, don't worry too much about it. Eventually, you'll start getting these five stars all of a sudden, and then you'll be wanting them instead. Most characters, once you reach that top tier, or once you reach like AR forty five, I believe, you'll start wanting these five stars and nothing else. So don't worry too much about it and getting these other four stars because the four stars and lower you'll be using to enhance those five star uh, artifacts now um apart from that there is uh i was telling you before we went on this tangent that there was one thing i really wish i knew 
um, before I started upgrading some some of the five star artifacts that I seem to like. And it's like when you get these artifacts, they either come with four substats or three substats. Now, one thing I am unclear is if at some point during the leveling of the item, if you can get double substat bonus upgrades. It might be in, I have a feeling that I've seen that happen once in, in my game throughs and my gameplays, but I've never seen it again, happen again. So I don't know if that's even a possibility. Now, if you're leveling up a three star item or a five star item, I should say, and when you reach that first threshold of um, four, level four, they will immediately gain one extra substat. So right now, of course, I don't have a five star artifact with only four because I've been discarding them as I as I go to get the other pieces. Um, and I have a feeling that for the most part, if you want to have the most upgrade opportunities for substat, then you want to start with the five star artifacts that have already four star, uh, four substats in their, in their set, in their information. So if you see a five star with three substats know that at level four you'll gain an additional one and that might hinder the capability of that substat um, the chances at least of going higher because it's it's used for that so when you start with a, an, an artifact that already has four four substats then the probabilities of, of getting that substat even higher is greater now there's another part uh, of items that uh, I wish to share, and I think it's something that a lot of people don't know. But if you are short on Mora, you can destroy items for Mora. Depending on the rarity and the, uh, the rarity of the item, and you will get and level you will get more compensation for it. For example, let's go ahead and destroy. Like, see this for a uh, five star only has three substats um, as opposed to this one who has four. Now, if I were to level this one to four, it will get an additional substat. Obviously, it's never gonna be Crete rate percentage because it's in the main stat slot but it will be something else. Might be defense percentage. It might be crit damage percentage. If it's crit damage percentage, this, this would make this item pretty good. Uh, but we never know what's gonna be. Let's go ahead and, and do a test. Um, I actually wanna do a test on this item. And I'm just gonna use basic items to level it up to up to four. I have no need for these one star items. Because I really want you to see what would happen. So that's level two. All right. So it has reached level four and then it has another subset now of Elemental Mastery tied into it. So Elemental Mastery was added um, as part of the set. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep leveling this up to see if there is a chance to get um, two substat boosts at the same time. Like, I, I want to say um, I've seen it, but I'm not too confident about it because I, I, I've... I'm not sure if I, I, if I if what I saw was true. Now, one thing that did happen here is that we got two times the experience enhancement. Uh, and that happens from time to time and it is dependent on, on luck if and luck if you if you get it or not. So attack got boosted here.
attack got boosted again in here um, for this item. And we've reached level 12. Alright, we've reached level 16. There's a defense got boosted to 37. We got a boost of two, two times the enhancement here. And of course you need Mora to, to level up, so that's also an important piece of, of getting Mora. Or having some more to do these kinds of stuff. And then defense got boosted here. So for the most part, I don't think it's possible to uh, to boost two, uh, two subset attributes at the same time. But I want to say I may have seen it one time. But I'm not sure if that's a thing or not. Uh, so I'm not too confident about that. But this item, um, it's not so bad. I might end up using it some at some point. Um, and that's the other thing that um, has a good synergy with certain items have good synergy based on their sets and their stats with certain characters. Uh, not just based on elemental reactions or the type of damage. Certain characters will have a special uh, passive abilities, you would say, that increase their crit damage or they have a passive attack boost damage based on their kit and they will obviously prefer items that boost that passive ability or skill they have um, for example let's take mr razor i believe So Mr. Racer, let's see, I believe it's him. I do believe it's him that has something where, um, Decrease contact with light and use my resets to cool down. Call. Hmm. It's below 50 increase energy recharge by 30. Okay, so he has a built in energy recharge boost basically. When his energy re energy is below 50%, his energy recharge is increased by 30%. So that means that if we had an item that had energy recharge bonus or an increase, he would get not only that bonus, but he would get 30% on top of that if he were below 50%. And that's uh, that's quite something. I believe d -Look has something similar. Um, and here, where he does the Pyro Infusion, he gets a boost of 20% pyro damage bonus during the duration of the effect so if we were to have let's say a goblet with pyro damage bonus that has the base pyro bonus numbers then these 20 percent will be put in on top of that so see there's some synergy there between characters passive talents and innate skills with the artifacts uh, when you're thinking about putting stuff together or putting certain artifacts together In humble supplication. Okay, we're going back. Now, if we go back to that hat that we just level up, um, hat that it's a it's not a bad hat, I would say. So let's not do that hat, but let's do something else that we might want to get rid of. 
Uh, let's see here. Let's just get rid of this. It has HP. Ooh, it's a Nemo damage. Nemo damage bonus. Um, might be good for a Venti. That a Nemo damage bonus might be good for a Venti, especially this Noblesse set. Gives an elemental burst damage bonus, has a Nemo damage bonus, and it will increase attack by 20% for 12 seconds. So an item like this with the right substat might be a perfect item for Venti to use because you'll be using Venti's burst. He goes out, comes, someone comes in, probably has to be someone in range to hit people um, sucked in into his vortex. And then you can well on them and, and do a lot of damage because of that. Uh, attack. Let me see if I can find some item that I'm not too attached to that I can get that we can get rid of. Okay, I'm not too attached to this item. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not too attached to this. Pass defense, HP, energy, recharge. Very common uh, stats. So basically, one thing um, I didn't know for a long time is you can destroy the item. Like. Oh, the item cannot be destroyed. Why can't the item be destroyed? Not sure. Not sure what. I don't think. Oh, I think it's because five star items cannot be destroyed. Has to be lower quality. Let's see. Yeah. So only level four are four star items or lower can be destroyed. Not five star items. So that's see, we learned something new today. Five star items can't be destroyed. I thought they could. I've never used this feature basically because I don't have a need to. I have so much Mora. But if you're strapped for Mora, perhaps this is a best way. But on top of that, I don't know why anybody would want to destroy the items because you do need the items to level the other artifacts in the process. So if you destroy them because of Mora, then you won't have the experience to level them up. But I guess if you do have the experience and you just wanted more for some reason, this is an alternative that you can do. And based on the rarity, of course, you would get more compensation for it. So for example, let's go ahead and destroy this flower and see what it does. See, I received 20, uh, 25, 20 for more for destroying this item. It's kind of nice that it tells you. Uh, what you're gonna get in response. I'm pretty sure that if we go to the blue items at the bottom, it will give us a different. Of course, I don't have any blue blue items here now because I've just used them all. But it will probably give us a lesser amount of that more. Apart from that, uh, the artifacts also have some flavor text attached to them, um, and you can just read that yourself for the different set text. Um, it gives you just a little bit of flavor to, to the item. Uh, and some of them do have specific uh, things that kind of make you wonder uh, about the previous holders that used to have these items. Um, gives us more story. For example, the, the Crimson Witch Flame set obviously talks about La Senora. So it is speculated that this item set belonged to her at one point when she was a pyro user. And the uh, Wanderer's Troop set um, talks about a band of minstrels or troubadours um that roam the land and it's possible that uh we know this band from some other stories and we can sort of like tie in that story with with, with other stories and kind of make inferences as to the world of Tavat and what's been going going on in it so 
So I think that's all that we can say about artifacts. I definitely have to do some cleanup because there is a limit of 1500 for the artifacts. So from time to time, I have to go in and clean up all those lower artifacts, uh, star, or star items and use them accordingly. Um, so that I have enough space when monsters and, and chests get open that I can collect everything that's in it uh, when that happens. And of course, there's three domains, one in Inazuma, one in Monster, one in Liyue. Uh, oh, those are for books. Those are not for artifacts. They, there are more domains than that. Um, apart from those three, there are domains uh, that uh, are available for you to go to, uh, which switch artifacts uh, have two, two types of sets in them. For example, this one has the healing set and the viridescent set um, in their in their drop loops. So you would go to these domains to get those sets. The only problem with that is that the there's a randomness to it. So let's say you're going for the viridescent set. You're at uh, ten out of out of ten runs that you do on that domain, you might get four or three of the set and perhaps out of that nothing is useful as far as what it may have for main stats or sub stats so and that's something i think they need to fix some way for us to be able to better match our interests with the sets um or perhaps make it so that on mondays only this set drops and on Tuesdays, only this other set drops. That way we can mix and match uh, or go the days that we want, that that the set that's available is the one that we want. Or make it so that we can change the main stats or change the sub stats on items to sub stats that are more uh, of what we're looking for, uh, for, that, for that item. Um, so, that's why farming for, for artifacts is a grind and a long-term endeavor, in my opinion. Because even with all the resin in the world, it's a possibility you'll never see that specific artifact that you are looking for. And that's a, a problem. Apart from these domains, these are the uh, there's only uh, these other ones that do the talent level of materials. Um, but that's a different topic altogether. There's three of those in the regions, but then these sets are available in the different regions. And of course, it's a possibility that sets from Mondstadt region are good for characters from Liyue or Inazuma um, and vice versa. So that's why you kind of, they kind of want to, um, you want to keep it, keep an open mind as to which sets bonuses best work uh, with, with those characters. And of course, this is the, part of the meta of the game, trying to find those items that best work with the characters and what you want to do. For example, they say Kitchen, uh, Kitchen uh, is a character that can go uh, and deal damage in two different ways, as physical damage or as elemental damage, based on the artifacts you have on her. Um, similar uh, official is the same way. She could do more elemental damage with her electro, uh, or she can go physical completely and be like a machine gun almost and whittle down foes that um, with just bow and arrow. So those are things to think about um, when selecting as well for for these uh, characters, what kind of substats and and stats you want them to have to better boost their their damage accordingly. And that, of course, it comes down to a personal, uh, the personal preference that you have um, and which playstyle you're going for. If you prefer to be a ranged character or a close-up with the sword or a claymore, it's up to you. And apart from that, of course, um, they have helped us quite a bit uh, with the addition of the crafting table here. And being able to convert those items that we necessarily might not like into 
the possibility, and I and I say that again, the possibility of getting uh, an item from the generics, what I call the generic sets, um, to to be able to to be used, and those of course are these: the Gladiator finale, the Wanderer's Troop, the Bloodstained uh, Chivalry, and the Noblesse Oblige. Um, these generic sets are pretty good, are standard across the board for most characters. Uh, some of some characters, of course, will benefit most from the Noblesse Oblige as opposed to others. And of course, Claymore Sword users and Polearm users will benefit from the, this Gladiator set as opposed to Bow users and Catalyst users who probably will benefit the most out of the Wanderer's Troop set. But of course, you put your uh, five-star artifacts here, which oh, we just learned that we can't destroy, and then we can convert them to get a possibility of getting items from these sets that we could potentially use, or once again, throw them in here and try to roll for it. Uh, there's a limit to this as far as uh, how many you can do per turn but i think you can put as many as you have in here and for every three you'll get another roll of another item so it's a it's another way to to be able to clean out your your space inventory if you're struggling to to get rid of these items because as you can see i have a lot of these items that Obviously, I've been trying for the Noblesse Oblige set to see if I can get something better. Um, but there's some others in here that you might want to get rid of. Like, for example, these three, this feather with a three, only three substats. Um, I might want to get rid of. And that's usually why I pick up those, those items that are likely not to be used. For example, this feather, it has attack, but it has two HP and a defense. So I'm more than likely are gonna get rid of that one. And let's see if we can find something else with three, three substats in here. Possibly very hard to do since that's mostly what I do all the time. Maybe I can find something that seems horrible. Let's see. Uh, this has double defense and HP. Hmm. But I only have one of those feathers. Let's go with this one. Uh, has double defense and HP as a substat. So let's, let's just get rid of it. And um, another thing I would note about this is that even though this feather says double defense, um, it's a possibility that a character now or in the future would benefit from a feather like this with double defense. For example, Noelle, which goes gets a boost out of her defense, might be beneficial for her to have this type of feather, which a double defense substat. Um, why I say that? Because obviously feathers are never gonna have defense as the main stat. Feathers are always gonna be flat attack damage. So if she scales out of defense, defense uh, a feather like this with double defense in the substat and properly leveled um, could be more useful to that character, to Noelle, than anything else, than perhaps a feather that only has attack and no defense in its substat. So you still want to keep an eye out for those strange characters that scale out of, for example, HP or defense, or they have different scale ups of crit damage or, or crit rate damage. So keep an eye out for those as well. And don't discount uh, art artifacts that might seem trash, um from a glance and try to think about potential characters that might it might be useful too 
Let's do these three items just to get um, just that one artifact from the troop. I don't know why I'm doing this particular one, but I'm just going to show you. Once it's done, you get an extra item. And of course, see, it's a three, three sub stat item. So I'll probably end up recycling it with double defense. So I'll uh, probably end up recycle as well. But that is how it works. And I think we have covered everything um, there is to know about artifacts. And that's basically all I know about it. If you have something else that I, you think I might be missing that is of import, please let me know in the comments. Because uh, I'll be willing to learn. I'm always looking for new stuff in this game and trying to find how to do uh, things better, of course, improve myself in the game so far. And even though I don't um, necessarily go for main maxing damage and making sure I have that perfect uh, one or two crit ratio, um, gliding be faster? I still, you know, it's still beneficial to at least get some semblance of order with your artifacts so that you are able to perform better with uh, your characters. And of course, I always have the fear that what if you're playing the character wrong or have the wrong artifacts and you're having such a hard time end up not liking the character at all and it's not the character's fault it's your fault because you didn't know how to play them correctly or you didn't know how to equip you didn't know how to equip them correctly so there's, that's always there's always that possibility uh when it comes to to the artifacts and probably a pitfall you may want to avoid so as to uh, not come to conclusions that uh, might be based on stuff that you did incorrectly all right well that's all i have for artifacts please please uh like and subscribe it helps the channel and uh, again if you have anything to add just let me know in the comments and uh, uh let me know what you think all right until next time see you later